Now, the federal government has announced, as you know, a complete list of spending cuts to try and get the budget back into surplus next financial year. The opposition says it doesn't believe that the government can achieve that goal. For more, Shadow Treasurer Joe Hockey joins us now from Sydney. Joe Hockey, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Virginia. If the surplus, this thin surplus that's been announced by Wayne Swan is not enough, what should it be in these financial times and what would it be under an Abbott government? Well, we just want the government to tell the truth. Uh, they've just announced that the, this year the budget deficit is going to increase from $22 billion to $36 billion. And that follows a trend of previous years where they announce what the deficit will be and then it's actually worse. Yesterday they announced that government net debt would increase from $106 billion to $136 billion. So whilst all these numbers are deteriorating at their own hand, and whilst we have Europe heading into recession, the United States anemic and China with slowing growth, the government somehow expects everyone to believe that they'll deliver a surplus next year. I think they need to tell the truth. They can't claim the credibility associated with delivering a surplus without being honest about delivering a surplus. OK, let me just try and get an answer to that first part of the question, though, if I can. Given all those circumstances that you describe and the situation that Australia and Australia within the world finds itself in, is the $1.5 billion not acceptable to you? Do you believe that it actually could be more? Well, it could be more if the government didn't spend so much money. Now, one of the furfies coming out of yesterday is the suggestion somehow that the government's reducing expenditure. In fact, over the next four years, after yesterday's announcement, they're increasing expenditure by $11 billion. Uh, and one of the reasons why is the government keeps announcing new programs and it keeps announcing new regulation, which means there are 20,000 more public servants in Canberra today than there were four years ago. And it's also the case that the government has not accounted for any money at all for the National Disability Insurance Scheme, which they promised to introduce. Uh, they have promised to build uh, new submarines at a cost of $36 billion. There's not one dollar allocated to that over the next four years. Uh, they've got a Productivity Commission report into aged care. There's no money associated with that. They've promised to deliver increased foreign aid uh, in 2015. There's no trend funding for that. Uh, these are multi, multi-billion dollar announcements that the government has made which they haven't put the money in the budget for. Well, let's just, if we can, quickly in the time remaining, just get a sense of where the opposition stands on a, on a couple of, of, of key issues. You mentioned before the situation in Europe and America. Do, do you not accept in any sense that international forces are playing a role in the Australian economy right now and with what the Federal Treasurer has to deal with right now? Do, do you accept that or not? Uh, well, of course, international affairs will have an impact. But the bottom line is these are government decisions, like the introduction of the carbon tax. The carbon so, tax sorry, actually Sorry to jump costs... in, just to clarify, because the Federal Treasurer said the situation he finds himself in now with that deficit is a result of the forces that are, that are leaving no, Australia no. right now because of Europe. Come we on. don't accept that. Fran, Fran there hasn't been... Uh, sorry, Virginia. sorry, Virginia, Virginia. There hasn't been a, uh, a deterioration of a scale in the Australian economy over the last six months that would cause the budget deficit to blow out from $22 billion to $38 billion. I mean, come on. That is a, a massive blowout in the budget deficit uh, projected in, in, the next, in the next six months. And the government somehow is blaming that on international events. Uh, they're, still, they're still forecasting trend growth next year. Three and a quarter percent. They're still percent. forecasting trend growth. The bottom line is, with the best terms of trade in 140 years, with an unemployment rate of around 5.5%, this government doesn't know how to deliver a surplus because it won't pull back on its own expenditure. So you, so you question the three and a quarter percent growth supercoins. as well? You, you, you so, question that growth forecast? Well, because they're still spending money. I'll just come back. They're still spending money on GP super clinics, which was a stimulus measure for 2008. Uh, the government is continuing to spend money on all the things uh, that are uh, so wasteful uh, in so many administrative areas, and yet, and yet they're expecting us to believe that somehow, miraculously, they're going to have a $38 billion turnaround 
in the government budget in the face of a deteriorating world economy. It's so, unbelievable. Some of the cuts come straight out of the coalition's playbook, public sector cuts, for example. Mm. What, what's your comp particular complaint about that? No, I, it's, I, I have no complaint about that. But Wayne Swan was just on radio saying uh, that uh, he doesn't expect any job losses and yet he's going to reduce the costs of uh, administration and departments by 2.5%. That's quite a magic pudding. I'd, I'd like to know how that one works. Does the opposition still plan to axe the climate change department? Uh, what we've said is we will reduce the public service uh, by over 12,000 uh, if we are elected because the public service has increased by more than 20,000 since Labor was elected. Yeah, that wasn't my question. Are, are you going to axe that department? Well, we, we, haven't, we haven't been specific about departments or agencies. Oh, you have in the past. Been... You've, been, you've been very specific no, about no, this actually, at the climate sorry, change Virginia, department. <laughs> if you actually look at my interview with, uh, uh, with Tony Jones, I actually was not specific about it. He asked me whether we would consider I said we'll consider everything. All right, so that's not necessarily on the chopping block. I, I, I haven't been specific about what is on the chopping block. What I've said is we've got to reduce the public service and we'll do it through natural attrition over, over two years. The Department, uh, so of, the Department of Climate Change the Department of Climate Change will be pretty high up the list for pretty close scrutiny, but that's as far well, as it goes right now. That's your quote. Well, well, I'll tell you why. Because the Department of Climate Change is responsible at the moment for a large number of programs uh, that are associated with the carbon tax and we're obviously getting rid of the carbon tax and the associated programs. What sort of surplus would you be forecasting then for a first year Abbott budget? I guess we'd be looking at what, 2013, 14, well, maybe 14, I mean, look, 15? Look, 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 you must, be, you uh, must Virginia, be thinking in those terms, Joe Hockey, if you're a, a treasurer who hopes to take the reins at some point. Virginia, with, with, with hundreds and hundreds of public servants, uh, Wayne Swan is unable to deliver a surplus. Uh, we will do it because we are prepared to make hard decisions about reducing government expenditure. And you will see our plans before the election. Yeah, you can't keep up the complaints, it seems to me, very much longer without showing your hand at some time. And well, that, that, well, se that, on, that on, seems to be the issue right now, that we're not, getting, well, we're not getting fully funded and costed policies from the opposition these days. Oh, hang on, hang on. Virginia, I, I just gave you 12,000 public servants. I just told you without that. Actually, we're we're actually naming a department. G GP super clinics. I mean, you know, we've talked about a whole range of different... The GP, NBN. GP super clinics is the, the NBN. answer. Sorry, the, the M National Broadband Network. I mean, we said we're going to cut that as, as, as far as we possibly can. There's nearly $10 billion in a green fund that the government has announced that we're getting rid of. We've said we're getting rid of the carbon tax and associated measures. Uh, the mining tax is now, after yesterday's announcement, the mining tax is actually going to collect half a billion dollars less than what the government claimed a few days ago. And we still haven't seen how big the black hole is on the mining tax package. Uh, even so, look, you know, you're asking us to give rolling numbers. The government can't even get its numbers right. So we have to work off their numbers. We will give you full box and dice before the next election. Joe Hoggy, good to talk to you. Thanks for your time. Thanks very much, Regina.